I've seen the hype. Puma claim their new super shoe isn't just faster, it's more economical than the best super shoes out there. Apparently, a three hour marathoner could save four and a half minutes on average in the marathon. I'm a massive skeptic and that sounded too good to be true, so I took it to the lab, I tested it myself under controlled conditions, and what I found might change which shoes you race in next, and you might want to reconsider your current race day options. In this video, I'll explain what Puma is claiming, give you some background to how they built hype around the shoe, take you through how I tested the shoes in the lab, show you the results, and then discuss my thoughts and what this means for your racing. Unless you've been living under a rock, you'll have seen the massive hype of the new Puma Fast Art Nitro Elite 3. After months of social media teasing, Puma finally revealed their latest super shoe before the Boston and London marathons. As well as recruiting hundreds of sub-elite runners to race in their shoe, they also tested their shoes in the lab against some of the rival brand's best shoes and released a preprint of those results. Let's start with Project 3. Puma recruited approximately 100 sub-elite runners for each of the Boston and London marathons. They gave them kit and advice, but more importantly, the new Fast R3. They also made a deal that any runner that could break their PB by three minutes would earn themselves 3,000 US dollars. The results were impressive with 30 PBs in Boston and 41 PBs in London and a total of 38 PBs over three minutes. Considering Boston is notoriously difficult to get right and London was a warm day, I think these results are pretty impressive. However, it's impossible to know how these driven athletes would have fared in a rival shoe. They also had their elite athletes putting in some very impressive results in the shoes. Rory Linkletter was a standout result with his minute PB to run 207.02 in Boston to play sixth. And when Amanel Petros hit the front of the London Marathon beyond halfway, I thought, can this shoe really have put Petros in the mix with athletes that are three minutes faster than him on paper? He faded to a very impressive 206.30 and eighth, despite not a PB. Whilst anecdotally they looked like a good shoe, I was more taken aback by the results they released from the lab. So what they did is they got 15 trained runners and compared their running economy in the Puma Fast R3, the Nike Alpha Fly 3, the Adidas Adios Pro Evo and the Puma Fast R2. Let's not forget the Alpha Fly 3 and Pro Evo have ended up on so many podiums. The late Kelvin Kipton set the world record of 2 hours and 35 seconds for the marathon in the Alpha Fly 3. The woman's world record by Chepin Getich, 209.57, Alpha Fly 3. The former world record for the women was set by Asifa in 211 in the Pro Evo. And the Pro Evo is the lightest of all the shoes tested, one of the lightest on the market, and costs a massive £450. The results were wild. The Fast R3 had a significantly better running economy than all the other shoes. On average, 3.62% more economical than the Alpha Fly, and 3.54% more economical than the Pro Evo, and 3.15% better than the Fast R2. When we think about the shoes it's beating, they are already 3-4% more economical than traditional racing shoes, before we enter the super shoe tech advancement. This is a huge jump in economy from an already incredible shoe. Another interesting point from the study is that all the athletes improved in the Fast R3. Normally, there is some individual response, some responders, some non-responders, but in this study, everyone was more economical in the Fast R3. Yes, it was only 15 runnings in this study, but still, the results are impressive. What is even crazier is when you consider how these economy benefits translate into marathon performances. The relationship between economy and performance is not linear. The faster you run, the less the economy benefits translate due to air resistance, Despite this, the studies include a table showing that 3.15% improved economy could save a three hour marathoner about four and a half minutes. For a 2.30 marathoner, it could save over three minutes. These jumps are huge. And I was inclined to think that this was marketing hype. Remember, this study was paid for by Puma. The lead researcher, Hukoma, is well respected and has studied many different brands, but still the results felt too unbelievable to be true. I decided I had to test them out for myself. So I contacted renowned sports physiologist Dan Osborne Nash at the Sports Physiology Hub in Cardiff Met to test my economy in my favorite shoes. Yeah, so running economy is the uh, how much energy you need to run at a given pace. So typically we look at how much oxygen someone needs to, to run at a given speed. And obviously the more economical you are, the faster you're gonna be because you might have two athletes who've got the same VO2 max scores, say 70 mil per kilogram per minute, but if one of them's more economical than the other, then they're gonna get a lot more speed but out of that option. 
So if we can get more economical, then you're gonna be faster at all race distances. I have run in lots of different brand super shoes, but I've always been the most economical in the Alpha Fly. All of my PBs from 5K to the marathon have come in the Alpha Fly version one. So I put them and the Alpha Fly version three against the Puma. I also wanted to see how I responded in super shoes compared to my easy day shoes. So I threw in the New Balance More V4 for comparison. The test comprised of a warm up followed by five minutes on a treadmill at 16 kilometers an hour with a 1% incline in each shoe. I then repeated the test so each shoe had two bouts of five minutes of running. Economy was then calculated from the oxygen consumption taken from the last two minutes of each five minute block to allow for a steady state to be achieved. Right, let's look at the results. During the test, I thought it would be close to my all time favorites, the Alpha Fly and the new Puma. However, the results really shocked me. The Puma outperformed all of the shoes. Compared with the Alpha Fly version one, which I've run a 224 marathon in, they had 2.2% better economy. Compared with the Alpha Fly 3, where I've had some of my best ever sessions, they had 2.7% better economy. This is significant. To be this much more economical than the best shoes ever is crazy. They were also 8.4% more economical than my Easy Day shoes. I was expecting them to be considerably better than the New Balance more, but over 8% is such a huge amount. If you look at the oxygen consumption, you can see the Alpha Fly 1 and 3 are very closely matched, but the Puma is just way out in front. Dan has included a really interesting figure in the results. He has used the oxygen consumption in the New Balance more to calculate what the equivalent pace is and therefore marathon performance would be in the super shoes. So, a 2.38 marathon in the easy New Balance shoe equates to a 2.28 in Alpha Fly version 3, a 2.27 in Alpha Fly version 1, but then over three minutes faster in the Puma in 2.24. It's when you see the data converted to performances in the marathon that you realize just how significant these economy findings are. If you are a true shoe geek, then stick around for the discussion of the results and what this means for you. I'll go into more detail of what I think the findings can mean for choosing a race day shoe and how my results compared to the Puma study. So let's talk a little bit more about what these findings mean. So clearly Puma has come out on top meaning it's more economical, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right race day shoe for me or for you. The Puma, when you put them on, they're so light, they feel great and they're bouncy and obviously the economy is great, but they're quite aggressive. Um, some runners from the Project 3 reported getting sore calves in sessions. Uh, they're not very stable. There are drawbacks to wearing that shoe. And if in the second half of a marathon, you've actually beaten your legs up and you can't actually run, then it doesn't matter how economical they are if you're, if you're walking in the marathon. I think if you do the miles and you can withstand this shoe for a marathon, then it's got great benefits, as you can see from the economy. But there are other considerations, making sure that it's a comfortable shoe for you and that in the last third of the marathon, you can really press it home rather than feel like you're banged up from, from the rest of the race. My results were pretty much in agreement with the Puma study. I was surprised. I thought that they were hyped up their results, somehow like made it a bit more beneficial for them to sell some shoes. But yeah, it doesn't matter if you disagree with this, this video or their study, I know for a fact now that I'm more economical in the Puma. So for me, it's a no brainer that I'll choose those on race day. And yes, I've made a video, but selfishly, I now know which shoe I'm better in. So that takes the guesswork out of it. One thing to note about the Puma study is in order to be included in the study, all of the athletes were pretty decent runners. For men, they made it so you had to have run a sub 19 minute 5K. And for women, you have had to do sub 21 minute 5K. So these are, these are decent runners running in the shoes. And maybe they did that because of the stability of the shoes or they thought that these shoes would suit that type of runner better. But it means that they are untested in your 3.30 hour marathoner, your four hour marathoner, your 4.30 marathoner. So we don't really know how they work for that sort of athlete. It's all well and good saying, oh, if you run a four hour marathoner, you're gonna save this many minutes. But if you haven't tested the shoe in a four hour marathoner, then you really can't extrapolate the results because you don't know if you're gonna have that economy benefit in a four hour marathoner. How do they create this super, super shoe, which seems to be better than all the other fast shoes out there? Well, they use computational design and simulations 
And basically, they ran simulations to get the fastest shoe. Forget comfort, forget everything else. They just wanted the fastest, best economy shoe. And that's what they've created. It's a lot lighter than the Fast R2, but the economy benefits over the Fast R2 can't all be equated to that decrease in weight because they say about 100 grams in reduction in weight is about 1% in economy. And this is less than 100 grams lighter than the Fast R2 but more than 1% economy benefits over that shoe. This video isn't meant to be a shoe review, but it probably makes sense to tell you how I feel running in the shoe. As I said, when you put it on, it feels very light and bouncy, quite aggressive. There's not much of a heel there. It feels like you have to be landing midfoot and rolling through. I've raced in them now twice and run really well. They are a fun shoe. It's actually the first shoe in a long time I've put on and had that wow factor that I had when I first put on the next percent. Just, I would start bouncing along on a stride and it just felt like an incredible shoe. But maybe the hype and the study had got in my head already, who knows? I would say they feel more aggressive and fun than an Alpha Fly, but maybe not as comfortable. So despite that big economy savings, if I didn't think my legs were gonna last in a marathon, then I know I can rely on that bouncy feeling of the Alpha Fly in the later stages, whereas I don't know how I would fare if I do bang up my calves or my legs in a marathon in the Puma. But saying that, these percent economy benefits, I will train my legs, I will make sure they're ready because that's minutes in a marathon. Remember, these are my results and a study produced by Puma doesn't mean that you'll be more economical in this shoe. And there's new shoes coming out. They didn't test it against the Pro Evo 2 or the new ASICS shoes that have come out, the ASICS Ray, Metaspeed Ray. There's lots of new shoes on the market. The Saucony is meant to be an incredible race day shoe. So despite it beating the Alpha Fly 3 and the Pro Evo, we don't know how it would compare against other shoes. For me, I felt more economical in the Alpha Fly than anything else. So for it to trump that was huge. I was pretty dubious when the Puma results came out and wasn't sure that Puma were gonna come out on top. And I know some people are like, oh, this is lab economy. What does that mean in real life? But we were saying the same thing when the 4% study came out with the, what was it? The Flyknit 4%, the Nike super shoe. And we're all like, no way can it translate into performances. And now we're all running in super shoes. And I don't think anyone out there can say that they haven't improved in a super shoe. I think everyone that's running in super shoes know the benefit they get in them. So yeah, if you don't believe the, the lab data or the studies or whatever, so be it. But the economy data in a lab does translate into race day, does translate onto the roads. I've seen from my own data, but also hundreds of other athletes I coach, whenever they wear super shoes, they are met more economical. So the fact that these shoes have trumped um, the shoes that are most economical in currently is a massive finding. The other argument is, oh, you're just doing five minute blocks in the shoe, what does that really mean? But again, I go back to the point, this is the same design that has been used on other super shoes and we've seen how that's translated into race day. So I don't really think that's a massive argument. I think the bigger argument is how you feel in the shoe late in the marathon. But if you're not running the marathon, if you're running a 5K or a 10K, then for me, it's a no brainer that you go for the most economical shoe because it's time savings and comfort doesn't really matter as much in a shorter distance event. Hopefully this video has been interesting or in some way useful. If you have any questions, then just let me know. Um, if you wanna look at any of the graphs, just pause on the video. And yeah, I was shocked and blown away. I'm still shocked and blown away. And I can't wait to race my next race in the Puma next week.